Oh, I got good news for you guys. I got real good news for you. The God of heaven, God the Father himself, took his one and only begotten son, sent him down here to earth to live a sinless life and to die in my place and to die in your place that we may have everlasting life. And that is good news, church. Do you believe it this morning? You know, I was listening to that, that third song, um, which I, I like that song, Joe. Um, it's, a, it's a good one. I'd never heard it before. I don't think I'd heard it before um, today. And uh, just talking about the fact that we're, we're free and it's so easy to forget that, that, that there's freedom found in Christ. And I'm just excited about the fact that who I used to be is not who I am today. I'm not where I'm going to be yet, but I sure am getting there based on the grace of God. Man, I'm ready to preach a word to you guys today. Uh, we are in part five of our series, Ready to Rumble. And uh, this series, really what it is, is you get saved by grace through faith. Uh, hopefully all of us in here, we've had that moment where we said, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. That is great news, except for the fact that we still got to suffer down here on earth for a little bit. At least that's one perspective. But what I believe is if we look at God's word, he gives us all of the tools to live a victorious life, a life that's filled with joy, a life that's filled with peace, a life that has purpose. And so we're in this series looking at the different armor parts that are found in the book of Ephesians, how we equip ourselves with them so that we can live a victorious life in Jesus. If you've missed any of the previous messages, seriously, go online, our YouTube channel. You can watch all of them there. They all build on top of each other for this series. It'd be really good for you to do. But let's go ahead and uh, look at the passage for today. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 15. Uh, throughout this entire series, we have been standing in honor of the Word of God. And so this morning, I would invite you to do the same thing. Go ahead and stand up on your feet, and we are going to read these three verses together. They should be on the screen if they'll toss verse 13 up there. And we will go ahead and read this. Read this with me. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Amen. You can grab a seat. So today we're talking about shoes. Any shoe people here? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest for a second. I'm a shoe person. Like, like if you could compare the shoes that Erica has versus the shoes that I have, I am the one who's a little bit snobby with that. I like shoes that look fresh. I, li I like shoes that are uh, high quality. Like any pay less people out there? No? Okay. We got some people that are saved in this room. All right. I like it. Like no shame against pay less, but there's a difference between a pay less shoe and a, a quality shoe. Uh, Buck is with me, my man. I love that right there. So, and, and I remember as a kid, I would think that shoes would make me faster or be able to play sports better. Uh, if you go all the way back, we're talking late '90s right now, so I'm going to date myself for a second. There was an amazing basketball player uh, for the Orlando Magic. He was number one on the team. That was his jer uh, jersey number, Anthony Hardaway. Anybody y'all remember Anthony Hardaway? He went by the name Penny Hardaway. Penny Hardaway, that's it. And he had his own shoe line. They were called Air Pennies. And so there was some, this is like Buck's message this morning, I swear. And like Air Jordans were out then. Um, but the problem is like if you wear Air Jordans, you got to walk like a duck because you can't crease them and you don't want to do that. So uh, Air Pennies, like they were legit. And I remember they came out with the Air Penny 3s, and they were all black, and they had like this teal lining on them, the same kind of blue that matches the Orlando Magic jersey. And my basketball team at the time was the same color, and I just knew that if I owned a pair of Air Penny 3s, it was going to be the start of my NBA career. Like, I, I just knew that was going to happen. And, and I wanted them so bad, and my dad took me to the Nike store, and he bought me a pair of Air Pennies. He said, don't you dare tell your mom how much these cost. If my parents are watching right now, I did not say how much they cost. Dad, I kept my word. But, and, like, like she wasn't going to know because I wore them to the first game. And so I remember the, the first game I wore them. I put them on. Tip-off's about to happen. And I had these things laced up. They were tight. And the reality was, is with these Air Penny 3s, I was still the same mediocre white boy playing basketball that I was the week before. Because <laughs> shoes aren't going to change you. 
But having the right shoe at the right time will make a difference when you are walking things out in life. Like I got a collection of some shoes right here. Um, this is the one that people love to make fun of me for right here. They call this my Jesus sandal right here. It's, it's a barefoot running sandal. It helps with your foot strength. And uh, I wore this on a hike with some guys once. And it was the most painful three hours that I've ever had. I kicked every rock and said every praise word that you've ever imagined with that. Victor, I feel like uh, I'm sorry for the things I said in your ear when we were going down the mountain. But th this is a good shoe, not the right shoe for hiking. Not the right shoe for hiking. Um, I also, uh, I wore these once for a hike. Got some Timberlands right here. I actually wear my Timberlands, so they got some scuffs on them. Not a good shoe for a 10-mile hike. Because you get a little while into it, and it's like it's a steel toe boot, and it gets heavy, and you start to regret wearing a shoe that's this heavy. Great shoe, not a good hiking shoe. My, uh, my go-to right here, the Ariat cowboy boot. I guess just how I roll. Not a good hiking boot, though. Like, you get blisters up on, I don't know if it's like on your calf or where it is, like this. Not a good hiking boot. Now, let me tell you what this one right here is for. This right here, this... This is used to keep you single for the rest of your life. No, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. I'm a Croc fan. They're, they're, they're fantastic. I wear them on a regular basis. But not a, good, uh, cro uh, not a good shoe for a long hike at all. This right here, great shoe for going on a hike. Just a simple little trail running shoe. Having the right shoe is important when you're doing things. The Roman soldiers would have understood that. If you would take their sandals, they would look kind of like this, but a thicker sole to them, and they'd have like a wrap that goes up the ankle. There would actually be nails that were nailed into the bottom that were cut off that would make like spikes so that they could be able to have good tread when they were on the ground. The right shoe made a big difference for these Roman soldiers. And when we're looking at this, we, we, we see that the shoe represents like stability and it represents mobility and it represents all of these ways on how we walk and we move. But look at this passage we read a moment ago through the lens of standing for a second. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand against the schemes of the devil, verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. Some of y'all feel like the evil days happening right now. And having done all to what? To stand firm. Verse 14 says, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, how you stand is important. If you've ever played any sort of sport, your posture is very important, making sure you have the right stance. We need to have the right stance in this world, but we also need to have the right stance when it comes to how we equip ourselves spiritually. Because let's just be transparent. The world is wild right now. The world is wild. And it is trying to make believers unstable and get off course. Like all we have to do is look at the news from this last week. Literally watching innocent children taken down. So, and, and how do we as believers work in that and work through that? And what I believe is that the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't exist just for us to get to heaven. It exists for us to be able to live victoriously right here and right now. I believe the gospel is for today. And as we grow in our faith, we can work this out a little bit. Look what Ephesians 4, 14 says. If we're going to grow in our faith, we grow so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. We are able to stand firm because we're not going to be immature, ill-equipped believers. We're going to be people that are dressed for battle in the evil day. 1 Corinthians 15 says this in verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord your labor is not in vain. We need to be people that are strong, that are sturdy, that are ready to take on whatever this world could throw at us. The question is, how do we do that? I'm glad you asked like you have the past couple of weeks. As for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Week one, we talked about how our battle is spiritual. Uh, week two, we talked about who it's against. It's against the devil. Week three, we talked about the belt of truth. Week three, we talked about the breastplate of 
righteousness. Now we're talking about the shoes of peace. Say it with me. Say peace. Peace Peace defined as this. The concept of shalom, which is the Hebrew word usually translated peace in the Bible almost every time shalom occurs in the original language. Peace is the word that comes from it. It implies much more than the mere absence of conflict. At root, Shalom means wholeness or well-being. Peace is not just there's a lack of conflict. There's always going to be conflict in this world. It's in that conflict, still being able to be whole, still being able to be well in that. And as believers, this should be our default. Our default should be peace. I remember in college, I had a TV that was like, I don't know, I spent like a whopping like $7 on this thing. And this TV, when you turned it on, it would always have that black and white static. Do you all remember that static that would be on the TVs? And the volume would always be at 100. So no matter what I did, whenever I turned it on, it would just be like this, as loud as possible to the point where it didn't scare us in that dorm room anymore because we knew the default of that TV was to be obnoxious. The default of believers should be peace. When troubles come, when trials come, your default should not be panic and pandemonium. It should be peace. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding as in the peace of God that doesn't make sense, that in your greatest abilities mentally, the peace supersedes that, that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I got two points for you this morning. That was just the warm up. Here we go. Point number one, peace is what I have because of Jesus. Peace is what I have because of Jesus. You've probably heard it said this way, no peace or no God, no peace. But if you know God, you know peace, right? Because if you don't have God in things, what you get is a situation that is completely broken and disjointed. But if you know who God is, you will know what peace is. Peace is. How do we know what peace is? The book of Isaiah prophesies it so well. Chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I am so glad that peace comes from who Jesus is. That is the root of where peace comes. And Jesus, as he's talking with his disciples, as he's talking with his believers, he leaves them with this statement in John 16. He says, behold, the hour is coming. And indeed it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you might have what? You might have peace. In me you might have what? You might have peace. In the world, you will have tribulations. I'm sorry to break the news to you. There's going to be junk in this world. There is going to be issues. Loving Jesus does not mean you're going to be issue free. What it does mean is that you will have his peace in the middle of those tribulations. In this world, you will have tribulations, but take heart because Jesus, I have overcome the world. Somebody just made an excellent breakfast and I hope they're okay. So, um, I don't know if you've had this moment before. I like to run quite a bit. It's uh, one of my hobbies. And when I go running, I usually ask my wife if she's seen two things. I ask her if she's seen my running sunglasses and if she's seen my Beat headphones because they're the headphones that like lock into your ear and they don't fall out when I'm running. And so all the time, I'm always asking her, honey, have you seen my glasses? Have you seen my Beats? And she was not home one day, which means that I have no idea where my stuff is because she's the one who finds the things that are right in front of me the whole time. And I'm looking everywhere. Like, I'm going in my truck, I'm opening the glove box, I'm looking all around, I'm throwing stuff around in our closet because that's how I like to look for things is with an explosion. And I'm like, where are my glasses? I need my glasses. It's bright, it's sunny, and I'm thinking, man, I'm so glad that I can see my glasses. Oh, oh, my glasses are right here. You ever done that? Looking for something that's been on your face for the last 30 minutes? For some of you who wear glasses on a regular basis, you may feel the exact same way. Pieces like this. 
You're going, God, where's the peace? God, where's the peace? And you've been having the peace the entire time. You just haven't been able to realize it's there. Peace is accessible for every single person who is called on the name of the Lord Jesus. If you would just go out and get it, it's already there. You don't need to go find it. It is present with you because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is a good word right there. I had him on the whole time. And and there's, there's a lot of reasons why you could follow Jesus. Salvation's a great one. Salvation's a great reason to love Jesus. You know what else is a really good reason to love Jesus? Peace. That's a really, really good reason to love Jesus is because he gives peace. He gives peace. And it's not a one-time kind of thing. Uh, We went to Niagara Falls many, many years ago. And when you go to Niagara Falls, they give you this, like, I don't know, like a poncho kind of thing that you wear. And because there's waterfall going and there's water flying all over the place, and you put the poncho on, it keeps you dry. Guess what you do afterwards? You keep the poncho because it's not a one-time thing. You could use it again, and you could use it again, and you can use it again, and you can use it again. This peace of God is not a one-time thing that only is good on the day you get saved. This peace is accessible every single day if you would simply lean into it. You can either have situational peace or you can have salvation-based peace. And I want the kind of peace that supersedes all of the circumstances. So the first thing we got to understand is we have peace because of Jesus. But peace is also what I can make because of Jesus. There's a difference there. It's one thing to have the peace because of Jesus. But now I am a peacemaker because of Jesus. See, I had this this unction, this belief that when believers, when Christians get involved with things, it should always be better. Like, like when a believer steps on the scene, it should be like, oh man, finally, there's some peace in this moment. Christians shouldn't be known for just creating drama all over the place. They should be known for breathing peace into things. We are not just peacekeepers, but we are peacemakers. And when we bring God into every situation, it allows the peace of God to be found. Matthew chapter five says this, Jesus' words, he says, blessed are the peace." makers, for they shall be called sons of God. Yeah. What I want to happen is for you when, you, when you, when you are in moments that just because of your presence that is coupled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, that things are just better because you're there. You ever been in a group of people and when like that one person shows up, all of a sudden things get better? Like, that's how it is with Jesus in my life. And because of that, when I step in places, it should be better because of that. Like, like panic is absolutely contagious. I mean, you all have seen the, the Black Friday moments where everybody's like up against the door because they got to go after that, that one TV, like 500 people going after that one TV that none of them are going to get. And it's going to break anyways because they only put the free TVs on sale that are the bad ones. But they all go up to the front door and then it's like nine o'clock is when the doors open, but they don't open it at nine. They wait till like 9.02 just to stress you out. And the doors open up and people are like fighting over things and going crazy trying to get the free thing at the Black Friday sale. That is panic. People that aren't normally panicky people become like that because of the environment they're in. Panic is contagious. But I believe that peace is also contagious. And we have the ability to not only affect, but infect this world with the peace of God. I don't want things just to be good when they're good. I want things to be good because God's a part of them. I want to bring peace into every single situation I can. So on Friday, I was uh, trying to do some stuff around the house. Like I, we'd had baseball the past couple of weeks, so I was way behind on getting our, <clears throat> our yard kept up. And I had all these things I was going to do on Friday, and it, uh, it started raining. And I'm like, come on, God. This is my day when I'm able to get things done outside. Why is it raining? And honestly, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. And it starts to pour, and so I come inside, and I'm like, <sighs> And I look out the front door, and I see this. Look look at this clip real quick. (laughs) Y'all, you can't make that up. I don't know who taught them that. That comes from their mom's side. That's special right there. (laughs) That's a Yardley move is what that is. But here's what I see in that. 
There's rain. There's storms. They were having so much joy and so much fun and so much peace in that moment because they had a covering over them, right? They had the covering over them that allowed them to be able to enjoy an environment that wasn't necessarily the preferred environment. But you know what? Not only did it cover them, it brought joy into my life because I was all mad about the rain and now I'm just sitting on the front porch going, aren't kids crazy? And not only did it bring them peace and joy and brought me peace and joy, but now it's bringing you peace and joy. Do you see how it spreads? I want to be a peace giver. I just want to deal peace everywhere I go because God has been so good to us. Romans says it this way to us in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. It says, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in his generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The, the heart of this passage is that if you're going to do something, do it all the way. If we're going to have peace in us that comes from God, don't just hold it to yourself. Distribute it every single place you can go. That passage goes on a couple verses later in verse 18. It says this, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with everyone who loves you. Does it say everyone who loves you? For as it depends on you, live peaceably with everybody who feels the same way that you do. Live peaceably with everybody who agrees with your political viewpoint. Live peaceably with everybody who loves Jesus the way that you do. There's no contingency on this. There is no contingency to dealing the peace of God, if possibly, as far as it depends on who? On you. This ain't just a preacher thing right here. This is anybody who's got breath in their lungs and loves Jesus kind of thing. Which means that we need to be people that regardless of the situation. And now you're probably thinking, Michael, you don't know what it's like at work. These people are crazy. Like they are demonic people. The devil himself sent my coworkers to come mess me up every single day. You have no idea what it's like on the way to work in traffic. I feel like every single demonic angel that could ever power a motor vehicle is right in front of me on a regular. It's not about that. It is about regardless of what's going on, regardless of how tough it may seem, regardless of how strong the attack may seem. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, with all, without exception. So if we're, we're going to get ourselves geared up with the armor of God. We got to make sure that we got a firm foundation. Y'all ever done that uh, cup stacking game before? Like where they, like they speed stack cups and they break them down? Those people are amazing. I don't know how they do that. But when they stack the cups up, the challenge is making sure those first three cups are done correctly. Because if one of those cups is off, it affects the second layer and it affects the third layer and the entire pyramid crumbles. That's why in the scriptures it talks about Jesus being our cornerstone, that he is the, the, the first stone that is laid. He is the one that holds the entire thing together. We have to make sure the foundation is correct. And sure, we're talking about the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. Pastor Mike's going to preach on the helmet of salvation next week and it's going to be fire. We're going to talk about the, the shield of faith. We're going to talk about the, the sword of the spirit. We're going to talk about all of these things. But in order for us to put those things into motion, we have to make sure that we are standing firm. You ever try to push something in the ice when you're slipping all over the place? Your, your ability to get things done is drastically reduced when you lose traction. Things are drastically reduced when you don't have a stable foundation to be found in your life. And it doesn't say that our foundation is righteousness or that our foundation is, is truth. Truth is very important. Righteousness is very important. The helmet of salvation is very important. The sword of the Spirit is very important. Faith as the shield is very, very important. But Paul purposefully, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, selected peace to be the very thing that we stand upon, the Prince of Peace himself. And when you say, All right, I have peace because of Jesus, 
and now I can give peace because of Jesus, you now become somebody who can drastically affect what's going on in our world. And so I'm going to invite the, uh, the worship team back up right now. This passage is so much easier to preach than live. How many of y'all got an area of your life that you would say is lacking peace? I'll throw my hand. I'll do it twice. You got three kids, triple right there. There there are moments in all of our lives. This is not a for your neighbor message. This is for you. There are moments where there's peace lacking and, and the tendency is just to back away from it. Be like, that area is a mess. I'm just going to hide that. I'm going to sweep it under the rug. I'm going to put it in the closet upstairs like we talked about last week, right? Like it's going to be one of these things we just don't deal with. And we're just going to let it work itself out. But Scripture's not called us to be just peacekeepers. Peacekeepers do whatever they can to make sure, oh, I hope you're okay. I don't want to mess anything up. I want to make sure everything's all right. And I want to make sure everything's okay over here. And I'm just going to to keep the peace and not make anybody upset and not deal with anything. And we're just going to hope and pray that Jesus is going to be the good God that he says he is and everything will be fine. And everything will be fine if we have the courage to go and make peace. Which means for some of you in this room, you're going to have to swallow your pride and make that phone call to somebody where there's division. For some of you all, you're going to have to take a look at that family dynamic that is lacking peace and go, you know what? I need to speak the peace of Jesus into this. I need to pray the peace of Jesus into this. Because he has called us to not only make peace, but to be peaceably, live peaceably with all. So I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet this morning. You know, I uh, told you guys about Penny Hardaway at the beginning. 1996, the Olympics were in Atlanta. Uh, He was on the USA Dream Team, first year that Michael Jordan wasn't on it because he had retired for a while before he came back. Uh, He was number six, and I had a number six USA jersey that I put on. Had his name on the back. Like, it was legit. It was like the real deal jersey. You ever seen somebody who's dressed up as something they're not? Like, just because I had the gear on didn't make me a basketball player. Just because you're putting on the armor of God does not mean you're doing God's work. You see, if you're going to get equipped for battle, you actually have to go to battle. You can't just wear it and pray it around like, man, I'm the greatest Christian that's ever walked this earth. Look at me. I got the shoes. Man, I got the, I got the helmet going on. If you don't use it, now you're abusing the peace of God. And what I want you to pray is that the Holy Spirit would just illuminate in a way that only He can where you need to bring peace into this world. So would you bow your heads wherever you're at? And ask God himself to bring to your mind and to your heart where you need to go make peace. Maybe it was a relationship, a work dynamic. Maybe it's in the church. Ask for God to make that known to you.